Good morning, everyone. Um, it's been a pleasure being in the class with you from Monday. Uh, I personally have benefited a lot. My memory is being refreshed. And uh, I know that a lot has been uh, said in, this, in the course of the training. So it's a pleasure being with you. I hope that uh, today, uh, if you have any question with respect to any field in agriculture, we will look at it together and see how we can help you uh, achieve your objective. Thank you. Good morning, my director and everybody in the house. I know we have been together since uh, Monday, interacting together in all our discussions. So I'm here this morning to see if there is any other way by which we can help you to clarify issues in the area of uh, market research, in the area of monitoring, in the area of mentoring, in the area of uh, uh, your market access, so as for us to clear all doubts before we round off for the day. I hope to enjoy you as we continue in the discussion. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm really glad to be here in this session. Uh, I'm happy we are all connected and feeling each other, seeing each other, hearing each other. Uh, it's glad to know that we are making progress uh, using technology. And um, a warm welcome from us, and I hope to contribute in any little way I can to help to answer some questions or make clarifications you might require. So thank you once again. A very good morning. Share your experience because being an academic and at the same time having a fish farm, I really want to find out how you started, what gets you into it in the area of finance, how did you manage it, and what has been your experience in the area of uh, fish farming, starting from the uh, the start stage to the level you are now. Can you please share your experience? Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Um, my dream in the world of uh, fisheries actually uh, started when I got the inspiration that um, there is coin in the mouth of the fish. That was my inspiration, that there is coin in the mouth of the fish. But that was why I even personally went to read uh, fisheries, you know, at the master's level. I actually did agroeconomics and extension in my first degree. So that inspiration, you know, drove me to read my master's. And after my master's, I decided to pursue that dream. In fact, my vision which I'm still not seeing, is to make a fish available to every household, minimum of six million per day. Okay. So I'm looking forward to fulfilling that dream. However, you know, I had to look at, I have to first get the theoretical aspect of the, uh, the industry, the knowledge. So I make sure that I have the knowledge base which is required to pursue that dream. So when I was in the, at the master's level, I was looking at the practical aspect of these fisheries. I want to learn everything, get all the scope. And that is what is important from the beginning. You need to have the knowledge of the industry you are going into. You cannot assume, you know, you cannot assume, you cannot be mediocre in any industry you are going into. You just need to have the knowledge base. So I had the knowledge base, and I also had the practical. And so as soon as I finished my master's, I had to you know, personally go and look for a land that I can afford, OK? I, did, I think because you know, there are three dimensions in fisheries. You can either go for earthing pond, the concrete tank, are probably the recirculatory system. I did not go for the high tech, okay? I went for the one I can afford, the one I can actually, you know, work with. So I went for the Atin Pond. I located, you know, a place, a riverside, and I personally built my pond. 
okay? And of course, I have friends. That's one thing again, like we've been taught in this program. I was able to connect with other fish farmers who can help me establish. Some of them gave me fingerling for free to start with. Some of them came and said, oh, we can, you know, partner with you, you know, to supply feed to you. You know, so I went for partners in this business from the world go. So haven't gotten my land, you know, uh, I also got my pond. At first I built, you know, uh, three acting pond. Because of my knowledge base, I was able to channel the river into the pond. And I, I, we call it flow through system. I channel the river into the pond and I channel the waste water outside the pond. So I was able to build that pond properly. Remember I said I connected with other stakeholders, those who can give me feed, those who can give me fingerlings and juveniles. And so when I, of course, one thing I also did, which I will also encourage us to do, is that as soon as I started, I was able to connect to my markets at the same time. So I was working the end from the beginning. I took it a little bit, you know, step by step. Like I told us in the course of our training, I started small, the one I can manage very well. And so, so with this startup, I was able to ex I was, I was able to start effectively. Then, of course, as soon as my product is ready, I prepare market for it. You know, I was able to sell it within one year. You know, I was able to make profits. And I, from one plot of land, I bought two plots of land. From the two, I bought four plots of land. I was able to build my farmhouse because I took advantage of, you know, all the uh, facilities available for me, the partnerships I was able to establish, you know. But I discovered that I was even, I was not getting the best I could. Somebody suggested that instead of selling my fresh fish to, you know, just the consumer directly, I actually smoke it. So I went to the next level of value chain addition to my products. So I was able to come up with a smoking king. So this time around, I'm not just producing my fish for, uh, for, for the market. I was also smoking my fish and getting my customer directly. So with that, you know, I was able to increase my productivity, my profit level increase at the same time. So these are the things I, I did. Number one, my knowledge base was intact. Number two, I was able to connect to other stakeholders who, I, who can help me. And number three, I was able to uh, add value to my products to get the right profits. And I expanded. So this is my, this is my little experience I want to share here. There are many other details in management, uh, the management techniques and everything that we can't discuss here. Um, just yesterday, one of the participants called me, you know, and interacted with me, okay? And I gave him my phone number. I'm committed to him. I already got his phone number. I, to I told me where he was, you know, and I'll be visiting with him in Abuja when I come to Abuja to help him. Uh, I told him you can't expand until you are established to help him establish and do expansion in his fish farm. Just like in aquaculture, it also the same thing, you know, uh, also will uh, uh, will apply to those who are in crop. I also have a crop uh, farm as well uh, in a seven acre land in uh, Belkuta here, where I do a lot of crop. I have yam, I have yam in my farm, I have cassava, I have tree crop as well, I have plantain. You know, all of these things, you know, uh, I have beginning to do. Thank you, Thank you very much, my director. Uh, there are many aspects to this management. Number one, you must be able, as fish, like we said, is equal to water. No water, no fish. So I must be able to manage my fish. I must be able to manage my water. I must be able to manage my feed. And I must be able to manage my employee. These four areas. The ecosystem is very critical. I must know the uh, the ecosystem the water itself is like poultry you must be able to manage you know the pen so that diseases will not uh, invade your pen also so i must manage my water quality that means like i told you i run a flow through system 
where water is coming from the pond, from the river, channel to my, my, my pond, and it's going out. The same thing can apply to your concrete tank. Make sure that your float, you have abundance of water in your, in, in, your, in your vicinity. So water is coming in from the supply and it's coming into the pond and it's also going out. The same thing applies to poultry. You can actually have a flow through water is constantly coming in and it's going out as well. So that ecosystem is very critical. Once you have the right environment for your fish, the water, you can be sure that diseases will be out 50% of the time you will have disease outbreak. Number two, with somebody, we mentioned it in the course of, uh, of the teaching. Your fish must be healthy. You know, Yakubu was saying that his, his own blue stock uh, are very healthy. So you must know that, you must know where your, your uh, I watched the video on uh, uh, Professor Joktan. He said you must know where your chick is being bought from. You must have the high quality chick from where you are buying it from. Same apply to the, the, the fingerless and juvenile you are buying. You must ensure that the quality of your juveniles is optimal. That's number two. Your fish must be optimal. Then your feed. We often say that garbage in garbage, uh, your feed must be of high quality and quantity. Then your feeding regime must be optimal. You can either choose to feed them twice a day, you feed them in the same spot to ensure that every of the fish there is well fed. So I've talked to you about the ecosystem, which is the, the pond. I've told you about the, 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 the fish itself, then the, then the, 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 the feed. Okay, so, so you must know that uh, one thing that we taught, if you look at that video, we told you about the feed conversion ratio, which must be monitored. So if you feed a fish with one kg of, uh, of feed, you are expected to get uh, uh, the, the weight of that fish must be commensurate to the feed you are feeding it with. So you must monitor that. And that's dovetailing to record keeping. And you must just, you cannot circumvent this and make end meet in your business. You must keep your records. Record is critical. So that when we, are, when we see your record in the first three months, we can better advise you whether you are going, you are doing the right thing or you are not doing the right thing, whether it's time to sell the fish. The final thing that I would like to say is the marketing strategy. Okay, you can't wait until your for this until six months before you start selling your fish you start selling your fish you know before the maturity you make your contact like i was telling umar yesterday that i was asking him a question i said how many juvenile customer do you have in your record he was tracking his brain say i know them i said no you don't know them you don't have record of where they are found you don't know how much they need per month you don't know you know, their farm and their productivity. So all of this that data must be in your, in your file so that you can track their progress, you can know when they need it. So all of this management strategy must be in place so that you can make success of your business. Thank you. Uh, the next question we go to Dr. Pateye, please. I know that you have been managing projects and uh, recently you have managed a big project, which is a World Bank project. I want you to share your experience as it relates to monitoring and evaluation. Why are you saying that we must monitor our project, we must evaluate our project? If we don't, what do we stand to lose? Please, we want your experience shared, sir. Uh, Dr. Pateye, please. Thank you very much for this particular question. And uh, when we are talking about Monitoring and evaluation, it affects every area of our lives. Even at the family level, you monitor and you evaluate family activities, family projects, and also everything that relates to the program the family has actually set for itself. The same way as businessmen and women, you also need to have appropriate strategies that you can use to monitor the progress of your business. 
Uh, particularly where my director was actually pointing me to concerning the World Bank project that I am the monitoring and evaluation officer. It is a project that is worldwide and therefore it has its purpose. It has its goal. I think the first thing thus far we have done in the project that make us to be ahead of other centers is that right away from the beginning, we have a workable proposal. There is no way you can go on with any project, whether business related, social related, technological related, educational related, that you just go to that particular project without knowing where you are going. Your proposal must be focused. Your proposal must get to the high thought of what you want the project to achieve at the end of the day. So we started that particular project by writing among uh, some committees that were set up to write a proposal for submission. So the same way now, because in that particular project, we be sponsored by loan from the federal government of Nigeria. As you are seeking for loan from CBN NASA now, and they ask you to bring up your business proposal, so the same way at that particular time, the university actually uh, assembled some experts to write the proposal on that particular area of project that we want to go into. And it is that particular proposal that help us to win the approval of where we are today. So we have taken about two days focusing on your business proposal as led by our director day before yesterday and I mean this morning yesterday and so on but you will want me to go back to look at every aspect of that particular proposal because at the end of the day by the time you submit that particular proposal now it will be scrutinized you will also be called to come and defend it. So if there's any area in that particular proposal that is not in line, it will show, and that may not allow you to get the grant or the loan that you are looking for. So our proposal for this project self true because we were able to identify the areas of the problem we want to solve. And your business must also have the areas of the problem that you want to solve. And after the proposal now has been accepted, what else do we need? We also need, in the proposal, they ask us to break all our activities to identify the areas we want to go into and to break each of the milestones to activities. And that was what I was telling you day before yesterday that your business may actually go through if you don't have, you are not sure of what, where you are going. Your milestones must be clear. And you set this milestone based on periodic basis. You must specify the time to achieve those milestones. World Bank will not give you any loan without seeing specifically tangible things that you want to bring out from that particular project you want to carry on. And they will want to monitor your progress. They want to see how many that what you want to do and the time you have told them that you are going to achieve it, they will monitor you whether you are achieving it. And at the end of the day, they'll be able to say whether you are performing or not performing. So the same way as you are writing your proposal, you must ensure that you set your milestones. If you are meeting in the proposal, 
that you want to actually uh, produce like two ten two thousand bears, real two thousand bears within twelve months. Huh? So, and you are putting there because you have calculated the rates. If I sell you, your income has been calculated in the proposal. At the end of the day, they want to know how many beds were you able to produce at the end of the day within that particular time. So, it is very important for you to note that your milestones are achievable. This check through your business plan and ensure that everything that you are put into the business plan can be monitored and they are achievable. Another thing is that in this particular project that we are into, we have business partners. We have partners that were invited from the uh, professional lives. And these particular partners, they have their own contributions to the project, and they want to know who are our partners, what are their contributions, how are they going to help the project to grow so that the goal of the project will be achieved. So the same way in your own business, you need your team. Who are this particular team and who are the partners you are going to relate with? In selecting your team, there are so many criteria you need to put in place. Maybe you are going into farming. Those that will help you to drive your farm in the related area, maybe in Anma Osbandi or in uh, Agro, do they have the knowledge of what you want to do? Like now, in our project, we are trying to reshuffle and to restructure to enable us to have professionals that will drive the activities of the project. Then your partners, that you, if you know that you alone cannot actually, you don't have the requisite knowledge and skill, and you want to bring in a partner, what is the contribution of that particular partner to that business? And you must have your um, memorandum of understanding well spell out for you to relay with these particular partners. Then the last thing I want to say before we actually round up is that in your market, you need to expand your market through, I mean, beyond the border of where you are situated. You have, in your business proposal, you have told them this, how you are going to get your income and the kind of market that you want to go into. But in that particular market, will the existing market that you are looking at now be able to allow you to achieve at the end of the day? So you must also identify the market and make research to go into other places to make yourself accessible to your customers and the end user that will actually benefit from your service or from your product. And lastly, I want to say that as we discussed the other time, our, the people that will help you from where you can gain experience, I thank uh, Mr. Abi, Dr. Awadumate, that one of you have contacted him so that he will be his mentor. So the same way, as we discussed before, you must ensure that you have somebody that you are looking out for in case of challenges, in case of troubles, in case of problems, so as for you to be able to grow your business. So I just want to round up from here and see if you have any other question in these particular areas as we are going to general discussion. Thank you, Director. I want to direct the next question to Dr. Adeshino Adewale the ICT expert, e-learning technologist, and everything you want to do with IT is there to guide us. Dr. Adish, you know, there is a lot of worry out there. Right here, you have these people, they are here, they want to access loan from the bank, and 
they want to go into business to use this money. But so many people are saying, well, even with this COVID, what we just experienced, you see that it was only those people that were able to really work virtually that we are still on. Those people that could not work much virtually, their business was almost down there. But there is this fear of uh, insecurity. We're going to tackle this insecurity problem and the area of business. Because there are some of us that are just coming up, we are not really very strong when it comes to IT, but we want to use IT to drive our business. What are we supposed to do? Then can we use IT in every area of business? Because we have a lot of farmers in our midst, people going into agribusiness. There are so many here. So, sir, we want you to give us a little guide from your experience, from what we, you think we could do that will really help us in the area of using IT to drive our business. You have the floor, sir, not additional. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Director. Um, once again, greetings to everyone. Um, yeah, very interesting questions, but they are very pertinent today as we try to navigate through uh, our businesses and to get success in life. Uh, one thing that is clear today is that ICT or IT, whichever way you call it, and business are now almost uh, seriously interwoven together. In fact, uh, there is a saying that they are together that you cannot have one without the other today for effective success in whatever we want to do. So ICT and businesses are now together, no aspect of business uh, that is not really uh, impacted by technology today. Whatever it is, you find out that technology does two basic things. Uh, it makes our work faster, and it also makes our work better, okay? And you can even add, it also increases the coverage of where our work or our businesses can reach, where you will be only limited to a few places. Uh, if you go down a little bit with technology, we can even uh, use, we can even reach more people. So coming down to the question, to uh, what of if you don't have technology, uh, will you be able to still do your business? Yes, of course. Of course, uh, businesses can still survive with technology. They are of different grades, different levels. Take, for instance, phone. The usual phone that we have, uh, there is a small phone that you can use just to communicate and send text messages. Okay, that's just one level, and it's technology. In fact, before the phone, if you were just uh, writing things down and sending by mail, uh, print, mail, it, uh, snail mail, that's what I mean, not email. It's, it's a simple form of technology, okay? So, but you go to a small phone, then you can go to even the, the smartphone that has more features. And of course, they are getting smarter and smarter by the day. You can even go higher to a tablet or a tablet and on and on. So yes, wherever you are, it's nice to start with the technology you can afford and you can use. But perhaps, in my opinion, what is more important is the mindset to be able to uh, move and to develop. Uh, many people say, um, yes, I don't know technology, and they stop there. Whatever your level is, start where you are, and continually develop. Read books, uh, listen to YouTube. We tell people these days, there is literally anything you want that you will not get, uh, get information about it if you go to YouTube. As, as low as it is, I mean, as crazy as the idea you think you have is, just search it in YouTube, you'll probably find a video about it, you know. Say you want to tie your shoelace, just go in and type how to tie my shoelace. So imagine you want to learn about, let's say, uh, computers, about ICT. Just type ICT inside YouTube, you are going to learn more. Let's say you want to learn about smartphones. Now that the 4G, 3G, you're hearing all this dilemma, 5G and all. Uh, let me know what does this thing mean? You'll probably get an explanation of it faster before looking for an expert to teach you. So the growth mentality is very important in, pros uh, in, in uh, progressing with what is happening today. So don't let nobody feel that they are left out. Not Let nobody feel that 
uh, they have to be taught or have to go through a big formal uh, teaching or university before they can really get to use ICT. No, it's wrong. In fact, some people have argued that what is being taught in many places by before the people get that is obsolete if they don't develop themselves. So it's not about that. The world is so dynamic and being having that growth mindset, um, a passion to learn and a lifelong learner of technology really helps. Okay, so that can help to make the business go. So you can use ICT in every part of business, even here. Here we are using technology to converse and to train. Okay, how about we talked about recording data? That's those are part of areas we can use technology. Uh, initially, you could record in books and things like that, uh, but you'll find out that if you can keep your records online, maybe with Excel, with Word, or, or even presentations with PowerPoint, you will do a lot better. You will persist it longer than what you will have if you are just writing in papers, and then you can retrieve those things faster. Okay, so you can record, you can store data, uh, you can process and manipulate data. I remember just before we came on to this session, the last session was talking about some formulas that were, have already been computed in uh, the business plan spreadsheet that has been made. So once you just put your data there, formulas calculate uh, what your uh, profit is, whether you are in deficit or you are in surplus, on and on. So this is actually technology working to make life better. Imagine if you want to punch your calculators and do all those uh, number crunching activities. Definitely to take you time and it will be prone to mistakes. So technology eases that burden away from you and tries to make your work more accurate and better, uh, more presentable as well. Okay, so that, those are areas you can use it. Uh, of course, by the time you go on, sales starts, you are um, doing some administration, Yes, invoices, you have to make them uh, in these days, even with electronic uh, devices. So right there in your, in your Word document, you can prepare your invoices, your finance transactions, your budget. Uh, and of course, let's not forget the communication. Uh, today, email, WhatsApp, very, very popular for communication, uh, even for marketing as well. You know, I know, I know we've dealt a lot with that in, the, in, in time past. So I'm just saying that, just as has been said, there is no aspect of business that cannot be enabled and made better with technology. And um, we just need to leverage onto it and take advantage of it. Now to the question about uh, concerns about security uh, and um, whether uh, your data can go or will just be lost or you will just not be able to survive. I think it's a legitimate uh, concern. It's just like when you have your fish farm or your business, whatever level it is, you want to guard, you want to put some measure of security there so that nobody just comes up and steals the product, uh, maybe the corn in the field, as soon as it's done, maybe towards harvest. It would be a shocking thing just to come and see that somebody has come and harvested everything and you are left with nothing. So security measures are placed, even to drive birds away, you know, and also, you know, even to to make sure that diseases don't inflict, uh, I mean, inflict uh, livestock and things like that. So measures need to be in place. The same thing with IT resources. There is, of course, the need to be concerned um, that the resources do not get uh, taken away. So the people must take measures. Okay, like in your phone, you have to secure your WhatsApp or your your uh, your SIM so that they are not easily stolen or somebody hijacks your number. Those those are measures we need to take. Your email accounts, you have to make sure that uh, you have they have strong enough password so that nobody can guess it and get into your email and begin to use things. Okay, also uh, your records and everything. You need to have backup. And there are different ways you back up, back up in your system, back up in hard drive, that's flash disk. And even you can back up also in, on, on the cloud, in your email and things like that. So all these things need to be put in, in context as well to ensure that data, uh, your data is not lost and that you are vigilant about security uh, issues governing you. So yes, we should be concerned, but we should not let it overwhelm us uh, and say, okay, because accidents can happen, 
you will not even bother to enter a car again. No, of course, you will still, then you will not be able to go anywhere or you will not be able to, you don't want to fly or things like that. There are risks, but again, when we take the right precautions, the benefit far outweigh um, uh, the risk. So I hope I've been able to uh, try at least stab at some of the questions that uh, you have asked. Thank you very much. Now from your, uh, the work you've been carrying out as a strategist, as a cross-cultural education needs, you have been, I can't be following you, your trained on entrepreneurship. And I have some of these people here, the participants you have here today, they are seeking for loan, actually, and they are going into business. And some okay. of them, their interest is on international business. But they are here okay. in Nigeria. I want you to okay. say something from the experience you've gathered, because you've been working across, representing different international uh, bodies here in Nigeria. At least I've seen you in so many of them, and in other African countries. So with the experience you have gathered, working at the international level, across countries, across uh, institutions, across organizations, across bodies, I want you to just uh, share with us what you think for somebody who wants to go into an export business or you want to have an international business, what the person needs to put in place to be able to really flow well, especially now that the person is borrowing money and the person should be able to pay back and able to sustain the business. Over to you, doctor. I've been, I've been speaking about this for the last several months because it's been a, a crucial issue that's actually in view. And is the term the international professional or the, the global citizen, the global professional. And I think uh, the premise to maybe make, make it a bit clearer is the fact that if you restrict your space, you restrict your, your, your place. And I think appropriately speaking, um, there is something around resource mobilization. So when you think about funding, people looking for money. I think, I think the first mistake the average person makes is the fact that when you think about funding and money, Generally speaking, you think about it from a monetary perspective, so cash in the account. So maybe I'll use myself as an example so you can get a clearer picture. So in my job, I travel an awful lot. I cover over 30 countries in Africa. I'm always on the road because I advise different UK institutions around the Africa strategy. So last year, I did over 25 countries in my, in, in, in my work. The year before last, I did over 30 countries across Africa. And this has gone on for the last four or five years. Now, the real gist of the stories is, and I'm, I'm using this as an example to show you what I'm trying try to talk about when, I, when I'm trying to resource, is the fact that the last time I remember, follow me, paying for international flight, accommodation, all of that with all my travels from my own pocket was five years ago. Why is that so? Because I've understood clearly that there is something bigger than just monetary cash to increase your business, which is why the term in use is resource mobilization. So basically, if you're trying to do something or achieve something, do you know somebody who can make it happen, even if you don't have the cash? So when people talk about international business or, or maybe looking for money, looking for funding, the first restriction is the fact that they are a Nigerian professional that are automatically limit their positioning. So what do I mean? We live in a global era where everything is interconnected, you see? And I think the basic thing is, First and foremost, you need to increase the, your leverage on who you know, so your partnership leverage. So if you're a business person, whatever your field of expertise, the question I normally would ask is, do you know somebody in Gambia, in Ghana, in Ivory Coast, in Uganda, who is doing what you are doing? So every person, you need to find a way to, of increasing your professional network in a global scale. And the reason is because once you are understanding your network beyond just your geographical location or your 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 your, your if you like um, your 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 specific uh, point of isolation where you are based, what it does is it yeah. opens you to opportunities that, average speaking, most people won't have access to. So what do I mean? So yeah. now, if you look at my, it's a bit noisy. So, so basically, I'm, I'm talking about. First and foremost, finding a way to increase the knowledge of who is doing what you are doing in other countries. You need to increase your space because partnership leverage is absolutely crucial, especially in the era we now live. If I want to do a, a deal in Tanzania, and I do this in Tanzania, but I'm not Tanzanian, but because I've got partners in Tanzania, I am able 
to strike deals and increase my portfolio and profile in Tanzania. The same thing with Zambia, same thing with other countries. So the first line of action is everybody wanting to increase the international positioning should increase the international partnerships. And there's simple ways of doing this. If I ask the average professional, and I've done this and say, well, have you got a LinkedIn profile? Most of the people will say, yes, they do. And I've done a simple experiment. And you compare the number of pages of your normal CV on your laptop. Some would have like five page CV. But if you go to the LinkedIn profile, it's about one or two pages. And for me, that makes no sense. How can the platform, the biggest professional platform in the world, through which you can increase your partnership leverage to become a true global professional, be two pages? And the one gathering dust on your laptop, which nobody sees, is five pages. How do you actually fail to broadcast your capacity in an era where there's global connectivity? That makes no sense. So simple things around increasing your partnership leverage, increasing your space, your point of interaction becomes absolutely crucial. And I must tell you, friends, if you because, because of how much I travel, the issues in Nigeria are the same issues in Ghana, the same issues in Gambia, the same issues in Uganda. They might have peculiarities, but automatically, because you got a positioning in those countries, automatically you've increased your market. And so that impacts on how you put a proposal together, how you apply for funding. I'll give an example. Because of my positioning, okay, most of the time, I don't, I don't even have to apply for funding because people in many countries know what I do. I get requests coming through. So it's not only me making the move. People actually request for me and say, hey, doc, there's a deal on the table. There's funding available. Do you want to be a partner? And why do I say so? So going back to narrowing out of to funding, I want to ask a simple question. If I ask somebody and say, I'm looking for funding, say, I'm fully for funding, and I ask, do you know who gives funding in the area of your expertise? I pass many people and they will tell me what they don't know. And the question is, how can you be looking for money and don't know who gives money. On my laptop, as a, as a professional, I've got an Excel spreadsheet of over 200 organizations, small ones, big ones, international organizations who give money in my field. I know when they give money, why they give money. I know when they will give money. I know who they gave money last. I've got a, a comprehensive Excel spreadsheet. And because I have that in place, it means I know when to start putting my documents together to apply for what fund. Last year alone, I won in excess of 40 million pounds. Not, not only me, but because I'm positioned across a good network of partners. And so I actually was involved in the winning of over 40 million pounds. Why is that so? Because of positioning. If you are just in Nigeria, for example, and all you do with an Nigerian partners, then you fundamentally made a mistake. You can't increase your resource mobilization if you haven't increased your partnership leverage. So find somebody in other countries of relevance, relevant to your own specific career objective or your own space, and make sure they know what you do. So I'll give an example. So in my test spreadsheet, I put it such that I know specifically that next month there are four funding opportunities that will come through. I know because I've tracked it. If you saw a particular country, and realize that, oh, well, this particular organization gave funding in this area in April last year and in April the year before last. What does it mean? It means that in April next year, they will give a call for funding. So from September, I start preparing my funding documentation even before April. Most of my research shows that most people who apply for funding bump into funding opportunities unprepared for, which is why they're always in a hurry. I can tell somebody who rush a funding application within five seconds of opening application. Because there are many, many mistakes you'd make. But if you are strategic and you're able to apply for funding and actually put documents together in advance of funding, you see it will be a massive difference. Point number two, the average person who apply for funding make a mistake. For some reason, I discovered, especially in African countries, Nigeria inclusive, I discovered that you are always the one leading the funding. What's the point? So I'll give an example. I just told you I won over 40 million pounds, okay, last year. But look at the real gist. I applied to over 20 funding grant applications, but I was the lead in only two. But I was a partner in 18 others. That's the difference. So your partnership positioning means that even if you're not even leading a particular funding application, 
But because you have got a good positioning and people know what to do and you're well connected, you can be a partner in other people's funding application. It means, therefore, which is better for me to be the lead on five applications, I don't win anyone, but to be the lead on one and a partner in 10 others, at least I've got guarantee, if you like, of funding leverages if the funding comes through. A simple test I want everybody to do, go on Google right now, try it, it's very simple. And just Google international funding in then write your field, whether it's chemistry, business, education. Just Google international funding in write your field and enter Google. You would be in shock at the number of opportunities and calls for funding around your area. Everything is in a simple Google search. So what do you do? You spend some time. You can't be looking for money and be disorganized. You have to be strategic. You spend some time, go to your Google search and begin to pinpoint who gave money at what point. Why did they give money? Put together an Excel spreadsheet. What kind of documents do they ask? Do you know my laptop right now? Because I know what kind of documents funding bodies ask for. Guess what I do? On my laptop, I've got a special folder called CVs, professional CVs. On that laptop, on that, on, on that, on, on that folder, I've got the CVs of over 200 potential partners. It means that if I see a funding opportunity and a request for five professionals in specific areas, I don't have to go too far. I already have spent some time putting all the documents together. It makes my capacity and propensity to apply for lots of funding opportunities a lot easier because I can apply for five within the space of one week. Why is that so? Because I am not doing it on my own. Everybody needs a funding crew. I call it my, my money crew. People who you work with who do specific things. I'm not sure how much time you have, but I normally spend like, literally a full one-day training discussing about how people can increase their funding opportunities. But because of time, I'll stop at this point because normally I've got too many things to say, but I'll stop at this point. The first question I want to ask is um, about the um, security around our business idea in the sense that we we are putting up we are putting our business ideas up there and um, for some good business ideas which I'm, I'm sure people have how are we sure that the system will not use that use that business idea and deny the uh, owner of those ideas the funds to go into such business since this this is done um, um, on, on the system that we don't have control uh, of the privacy you know, or security of, around the idea. So that's my first thing. I just want to assure uh, Mr. Chris that uh, uh, the directorate actually have close to about 10,000 students that write business plan every semester, you know, and we greet them. They have credible business plan and we greet them. Many of them, we even assist to ensure that their business plan will be patent. We, are, we stand as a directory to help the growth of uh, the next generation, to help them launch into the, to become the best that they can be. So we want to assure you that uh, we are for your growth and development. We will not do anything unethical. Thank you. Um, uh, I want to appreciate all the speakers uh, today. It's been wonderful. Uh, but I want to direct my, my question to Dr. Sam Awolu Martin. Uh, haven't heard his story. It was, I, was, I would say uh, I'm really fascinated and it's so interesting. Uh, but I want to, and then the way he explained to us how he channel, he had to build his pond in a like maybe close to the ri uh, river, and then he had to build it in such a way that the inlet and outlet and the water everything was you know the natural way. It's really quite interesting. But my question is, um, having done that, I don't know how he was able to manage it considering a whole lot of things, the security of your pond, 
Uh, you know, you know how our our country is, and so I've been really wondering how you can do it. I know it's interesting you can do that, having to channel it, the inflow and the outflow. But how were you able to manage it in such a way that you didn't lose your 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 you know you didn't lose your fishes? And uh, next question is to Dr. Kanimo or Odon. Uh, it was also interesting about funding and all that. It's quite interesting. It's just that we had a short time to deal with that. Uh, but my, I'm thinking, considering the fact that funding, the way it comes, uh, you know, there are categories of funding, especially now when it, it, you know it has a lot to do with the funding that you have to repay. So I, I feel it's also good to let people be aware and educate people on funding so that they don't have the mentality that funding is about just getting money, getting money from all angles, and then they don't consider because it has ruined a lot of businesses. That um, yes. You see, the first thing that you will have to do, either in fish farming or poultry, is your location. Okay? Your location is very critical. Now, with respect to your question, I, you know, you have to be able to build the pond such that the topography of the land must be followed. So you don't build straight, you build this way, okay? And the upstream, water is coming from the offspring and is coming into your pond. And because you built it, it connects the pipe from the river underground. You see, everything you must start from the beginning. You have to plan it such that, you know, I think uh, Dr. Pata has been to my farm. He knows the terrain of that farm. So water is flowing from the upstream. I channel it into the pond and interconnect all the ponds, you know, by a pipe into it. Then I put my wire gauge at the mouth of the inlet. I put my wire gauge at the mouth of the outlet so that no fish is going out. At the extreme end, I put a wire gauge. At the inside, I put a wire gauge. Nothing can is going out, nothing is coming in. Now, you see, if you don't secure your pond internally, people can come and catch away your fish overnight. So I have learned that by experience. They have suffered it before. So, I now have the wisdom to plant bamboo trees inside the pond with their leaves inside. The fish can go in among the bamboo trees, okay? But, but the individual who come to throw their net into the pond cannot just catch my, away my fish overnight. So if you throw your nets, you will not be able to capture any fish. Your net will hang. And also, I plant also dangerous weapon, bottles, anything inside strategic places in the pond. You cannot enter my pond without my permission. Okay? So I secure it. Also, you see, the bank of the, the pond are well raised up. Okay? Such that you know, the fish cannot go out. Water, the flood coming. I've suffered it before. Flood just came and took away my, my fish. So I now raised the bank by bags of, you know, of, of sand. I raised it properly you know, to secure you know, the, 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 the pond. So that's how I you know, secure the pond from, uh, from the flood and from thieves who will come overnight to catch away my, my 18 pond fish. Now note that I'm using 18 pond because I can you know, cut down the cost of my, my, my feed. I can use locally compounded feed, you know. So that's why I, I love to use atin pond. And most of the time, when you go to such land, people will sell it to you because it's by the river. Nobody wants to build anything in it, you know. So it's cheaper to buy la such lands. And once the construction is right, you know, you can channel your water in and channel it out, securing it within and without, and also securing the fish by the strategy I just mentioned. Thank you. The, the, the trick, the trick really in funding is not to restrict yourself, okay? Now, and I want to ask an open question. Would you prefer to get funding you have to pay back 
if there is funding you don't have to pay back? That's a very local question. Okay, everybody would know that I would prefer a funding don't have to pay back if that was available. So I guess the, the, the premise is to understand what, when it comes to funding, you have to be holistic and strategic. So it's a mixture of both. Now, let me also say as well, and I agree with you, that has to be very clear. Now, ultimately, you have to know, the first point of reference, I always say is, you need to know who gives money. It's the first basic question. Well, that is a bank, an organization, a company, an individual. You need, if you're looking for money, the first thing I expect anyone to know is not have a list of everybody who gives money, whether they're asking you to pay back or they are not. In my experience, because of my, ex if you like, my exposure and my spending time to specialize in this area, I've discovered that there is too much money available in this world that I can't remember when last I looked for money I had to pay back. When there are too, that there's too many opportunities for grants and funding, I don't have to pay back. That's my point exactly. I'm not saying both doesn't exist, but it's how you look at funding. Let me give you another example. Do you realize that there are some funding opportunities that just pays for you to attend an event for you to meet funders? That's actually true. My point is, so, so this, this, this is a small grant that gets you to a location of an investment forum for you to even meet people you can engage with to get extra money. This is how basic I can get, okay? And essence was this, everybody go on Google now. I've done this across the continent. It shocks people each time they do it. Just type international funding in business, international funding in education, international funding in this. That's all you need to do on Google. I can assure you, no matter your area of expertise, a long, endless list would come out. It's a kind of list that if you scroll down in Google, you will see page two, page 10 to page 18. Most people just stop at page two for an average search. But the average person who knows, knows that the actual juice of a search begins from three. If you are looking for money, you should put in the work. People just want like small handouts. Tell me who gives money. I've told you, just spend some time. You will be amazed. I did this myself and I've never regretted. I've never had to look for money in the last five years. My concern is first to Dr. Sam Paolo. I, had, I listened to him keenly about the feeling thing of um, fish. Now, we have a pond by Riverside to the sea, and the water is moving. How do you feed? How do you put the feed into that pool of water so that, I mean, it remains where the fish is need them. I, I'm trying to visualize that possibility. And then um, my other question to so Dr. Akanimo Odong, yes, I have his email. I'll be following him. I'm very passionate. I've put him his photo of his friend already. Is um, how soon can he take up mentoring for me and perhaps others, training us? I want that opportunity. And then maybe I'm asking some other question about some further training. So I know I think some specialty in this area because we must help our people, we must help ourselves too. Those are my concerns. Thank you. So I'm asking, for example, our internet is unstable. Okay. Now, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Now, if you, if for example, on this side of the pond, you can see the pipe from here. Yes. Okay. Yes, this is not the, the, the water level has been lowered in this particular pond. The water level has been lowered. Now, if the water level is very high, you know, fish are very like human being, like any other animal. They are very intelligent. Remember, it's an enclosed pond. Okay. Yes. Good. They are very intelligent. If you start training them feeding them in a particular spot. Once you throw the feed there, they will all converge to come and eat. Wow. At this point also, you can control the amount of water coming in by lowering the elbow, okay? And okay. control the amount of water going out by also lowering the elbow if it's well constructed. 
Okay. So once you start feeding them from a particular point and a particular time, they will always come there at that particular time to feed. You can either, if when, once you start with them with that strategy, you can be sure that, you know, they are well fed, you know. So fish are very intelligent. For example, this particular farmer pump water from a source into the pond using the pumping device here. Of course, uh, preview, if you watch that video we showed you, you will see the concrete tank, you know, and the, the, the mobile tanks that we use, you know, in the fish uh, farm. We don't, if you go to that video, you will see a lot of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, of resource there. So fish are very intelligent. You know, you feed them from one particular spot. It's not, it's not like the river, you know, uh, that you, the picture you have in mind. It's an enclosed environment where you bring in water and you also channel water out at the same time. Feeding them in the same, of the same spots we give you advantage of monitoring their feeding regime and, uh, and, and uh, you can get the best out of the fish, you know, based on the quality of the feed and the quantity you are feeding them, you know. I remember I have a time schedule because I have to go to work. I will feed my feed in the morning, you know, because the dissolved oxygen level will have been high at that time. By the evening, I'll come back to feed them. They will always come to that spot to eat. Thank you encourage you to you know walk the end from the beginning you must see the end from the very beginning and make sure the end is very clear i want to leave you with that word the end from the beginning is what i want you to see if you don't see the end from the beginning you will um you you will fall by the wayside you know like uh, uh, Yakubu has just said, you know, even with this training, he has gotten an end. And uh, I we sincerely wish you the best. We are available for counsel, for mentorship, without, you know, uh, uh, asking for money. Because we are social entrepreneurs, we want to see uh, people establish, like uh, Dr. Odon has just said. There are many things you can get without paying money, without, without paying for. We are available to help you establish and expand. Thank you. I encourage you to keep your vision, keep your vision, your business vision, follow your focus, and also don't quit. In spite of all challenges that you may face around your business execution, Go forward, and you can make it as a young as an entrepreneur. Thank you. Much, uh, just to say, self-development, lifelong learning, it's a key. So let's always engage in always improving ourselves personally and uh, continually. Then regarding uh, patents and copyrights, uh, if you have your very good idea or product that is very unique, and you are concerned that it might be stolen. Uh, perhaps it's time to think about copyright uh, uh, or patenting your idea or product. Uh, so thank you very much. With everybody, from today, and it begins with your mind, there are 10 dimensions towards being an international professional. I only touched on one today. But the premise is that the very first and most important dimension is international outlook. It begins with your mind. Once your mind is clear that you're not just an Nigerian professional, you're an international professional, it affects every other thing you do. And I hope at some point, working with the, uh, I mean, with now, we can put together a series of other events to increase your internationalization capacity and potential in a world that is globally connected with so much resources. Thank you very much. It has been a wonderful time talking with all of you and the participants. I really thank you for the uh, cooperation, for the attention, and for your contribution. So at this time, I want to hand over to the moderator.